Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 1028. Pro primarily the chapter that focuses on Queen versus Sanji, among other things. Start off with Luffy on the couple weekly show and jump with the King of Knowledge apparently, which is hilarious considering who it is. We also got a cool looking colour spread. Honestly, one of my favourite looking colour spreads in a while, just because of how different it is. It's like a video game thing with Usopp and Nami playing the games with the controllers and you got the rest of the straw hats uh, dressed up as the, I guess, cosplaying as the video game characters, which is pretty cool. Some iconic characters you notice. Jim Bay as Mario, obviously. You got Frankie as Donkey Kong. You got Luffy as Rio, of course, from Street Fighter. And you got Zoro as Link, which is hilarious. And I'm wondering, it's going to be foreshadowing whether or not we actually get the full Straw Hats by the end of Wano, considering what we've got in this chapter. We start off with, I guess, Scyther Paul, and you see the one of the scouts with the eye symbol. The agent is talking to CP0 on the other side. We get to find out who that is. Well, first off, they talk about how the Devil Fruit Vega Pump made is related to the, another dragon that appeared in front of Kaido. So they don't seem particularly worried about that considering they brought it up a couple of chapters ago because of the, under the assumption that these pirates will take themselves out, which is, in my opinion, a complete mistake. So they're just waiting until other thing dies down, apparently. Orders from high above in the unlikely event that Kaido is defeated. So more ships are coming into Wano. So that's not good. Number one, the border of Wano aren't even opened yet. And you already have warships on the way from the world government that have been deployed. So they're going to come into Wano. There could be someone ready to take care, to take care of them. Maybe the rest of the Big Mom Pirates because we still don't know where they're at. And I could definitely see them doing something. If, if, unless they're dead, which is completely disappointing, consider, considering one of them is a Yonko commander in the form of Smoothie. So that could be disappointing if we don't get to see anything else with them. We know Big Mom's on the island, dealing with with Kid and Law. So we also get a brief about how the numbers are from where, how the numbers were, how the numbers were before the battle actually started in Onigashima to how it is now. So before the battle started, it was a thirty thousand to five thousand four hundred. Now the present is like 12,000 to 8,000 and obviously that's due to Thomas of Dinkibi Dongo. But then the most important part of this chapter is like, okay, uh, there's one more order. It relates to the Straw Hats. Make sure you capture Nico Robin. And they don't see kill her. Make sure I capture Nico Robin alive. So no matter how this ends. And we see Brooke and Robin making their way through the Beast Pirates, which I can't, I can't tell if Robin's actually putting up a fight. I it doesn't really matter at this point, but it, the most important part is Robin's awake now, so if you, Robin's able to move on her own. But yeah, the, now there's an the element of danger that approaches Robin. But it's cool that Brooks getting a chance to shine, even though he didn't get a 1v1. Then again, the Chopper didn't really get a 1v1 either, and na neither did Usopp. So unless th things change, which I don't think they will, just because Odish literally trying to wrap up the ending of Wano. Whether or not we lead into another act, I don't know. I don't know if there's enough time for that with Oda. Because it's like he's trying to polish everything off right now. He's trying to expect, he's trying to show us what's going on before he opens the next act in Wano. I don't th think there's much point in doing that, considering... And I'll get into that more. We jump to Momonosuke, he's trying to control the clouds. You can see the flames around Onigashima. And we, we find out that Yamato is separated from Momonosuke again because Yamato has an idea. So, Momonosuke is like trying to like control the Onigashima as you see rocks falling apart. Again, like I said, they, those are not pebbles, so that's not going to tickle if they land on someone. Because there's weapons inside on Onigashima, you see like Yamato trying to cl climb, I guess, remove some of the weapons so it doesn't go off like a nuclear bomb. We get the part where Yamato separates from Momonosuke. So, Yamato go, decides to go back to the Skull Dome to, to minimize the destruction by removing the weapon. Which is pretty smart on Yamato's behalf. Yamato goes into a full zone form for the first time, so that's pretty cool. And it's interesting too because it looks like Yamato's actually climbing on Igashima. It looks like Yamato's in a hybrid form, but then decides to go into a zone full zone form, which is pretty cool. This is pretty cool because it gives Momonosuke a chance to like get some development and actually act, be a shogun and hero like Odin was, without being pushed by someone else. Like. Momonosuke needs some development by himself. So without Shinobu, without Yamato, without Luffy, Momonosuke has to be the one by himself to overcome his fear 
and say and stop on Higashima and probably save the people in the flower capital. There's a lot of speculation that because of Momonosuke, he's going to use his clouds to like move on Higashima away from the flower capital. My question is this where is he, where is he going to put it? Where is he going to land it? Where is he going to guide it? Because Yam Yamato is going to get rid of the weapon so it doesn't cause as much destruction. That takes care of the people that's inside, but it doesn't help the people that's down below. But speaking of which, we go inside and we see Sanji's clash with Queen. And I mentioned in the previous chapter how we didn't get to see Sanji at all, but we did see Queen. And when we saw him, he was in his Brachiosaurus form. I thought that was kind of weird. Now we probably get an idea as to what went happened, as to what happened. But because by the end of this chapter, Queen goes out of his hybrid form into his Brachiosaurus form because of how he's trying to hype it up. Sanji comes in with a kick. Queen blocks it with his arm, and then Sanji's like, it's so strong. So this is where Sanji's starting to struggle with Queen in his hybrid form, as you would expect, as he should. Queen tries to attack Sanji. Sanji, Sanji barely dodges it. And it looks like he either clipped his cigarette or it clipped his hair. I'm not too sure, but you see something flying off. And then Queen's like, just get, just get serious and use it already. He's talking about the raid suit, which is something that Sanji's completely against throughout this chapter. Because you used it against King, right? So use it here. Get serious. So I like that about Queen. He's like, he doesn't want, he wants a fight from Sanji. But this was going to happen anyway, because obviously we needed to learn more about the Vince Mokes, about Judge, and about Queen as well as Vegapunk. You you tie it up in one in one bow with this fight, which, I, which I've been saying multiple times. Queen attacks with this pacifista like blast, and Sanji barely avoids it. I have to say, I like the shade when you see Sanji's face and that he avoids the attack. So then Sanji comes in with Diablo Jamba, Grill Shutter. And then, so Sanji comes in. If you look at the abdomen of Queen in his hybrid form, it resills and brings Grill, which is pretty funny. Queen gets sent back and then gets fl sent flying into a bunch of like fodder from the Beast Pirates, which is interesting because King did the same thing to Zoro where he. The Zoro ends up crashing into Frankie, which is pretty funny. So I like the parallels that this time it was Sanji sending a Yonko commander into some of his subordinates. Though Queen was quick to recover and then goes into his Brachiosaurus form. And that's because we learn more about his body in this form than we have before. So Queen actually detaches his upper half of his body with his lower half. And then he uses that upper half to like wrap around Sanji. Sanji gets careless and actually gets caught and... Sanji's in a real bind, and to me, this resembles to me this resembles what happened with Luffy and Ulti. It, and if Yamato hadn't shown up, what would Luffy, Luffy been able to break out of Ulti's grip? Because we still don't know. That's one of the things we'll never know. It has been hyped up. No one's ever escaped. And then this is where Queen's like egging on Sanji again to like, yo, use the raid suit, use the raid suit. Sanji's like, nope, I'm not doing it. And then Queen's like, you, you see the other half of my body, it has weapons attached to it. I'll have them blow you up. And as soon as he said that, the, the weapons actually opened fire and nailed both of them. So that's kind of dumb on Queen's behalf. So that's the only reason Sanji escaped. Kind of interesting whether or not Sanji could have broken himself out of there. Either way, wait, you see the state of Sanji's body, right? And this is where the first instance where we find out something hugely different about Sanji's body. So you see like his leg and his body, how it was like contorted and bent because of Queen's attack, but then immediately recovers. I think it's stated that Sanji's bones are broken, which is something that Zoro went through after his attack with Kaido was done. Like, he couldn't move a muscle. So, the same thing here, only this time, Sanji's quick to recover because he's like, I'm back to normal. And then Queen attacks with his blade, by the way, and it automatically shatters. I'm like, what the Queen's like, what the hell is this? And like, Sanji's like, I don't want to be a monster too. This sucks. And it's been... So Sanji's awakening a new power within him that he has not had before because we haven't seen Sanji's body respond like this ever. So the fact that he can, like, withstand... Oh, oh my gosh. Like, the fact that he can withstand a sword. I tell you, I, I noticed he went back into his hybrid form. So I was kind of wrong about... Hit this chapter ended with his Brachiosaurus form. So wondering, you see like Sanji in the ground, right? And I I made a comment like, okay, we we saw somebody clearly with his legs in the air. Was that Sanji? 
and I kind of asked that, and we didn't get a res we, we didn't get to find out. But maybe maybe that was Queen goes into his hybrid form. So maybe that happened while what was going on was King versus Zoro. That's what it looks like because you clearly see him in his Brachiosaurus form. He attacks Sanji, and the sorts shattered. And the and oh my gosh, the the Sanji fanboys are gonna are gonna open fire on the Zoro fanboys because. Can you, can you imagine what the debates are going to be like? Oh, Sanji can absorb swords now. So maybe he's a match for Zoro. So you know you know this is coming. You know this is coming. The fact that the Sanji's body is responding like this. And we've seen this before with the Vince Vokes. How, how the bodies can take damage and recover. We saw this with we saw this with Raju after he, she got shot in the leg by Pudding. Not too long after that, she recovered. And she was fine, pretty much. Most people would still, still be in hospital or not be able to walk again. But Reiji was fine. So we know how the Vince Max bodies operate. Now Sanji's is starting to operate the same. And I'm I'm starting to wonder if putting on the raid suit has altered Sanji's body structure. To where he can absorb damage and repair itself. This is something that I've been asking for. Sanji's going to get the power up without the raid suit. I think a lot of people would prefer that. We'll have to wait and see where that goes. Because San, Sanji's refusing to put on that raid suit. Uh, I think Sanji's going to put on that raid suit again. But only after one, and I'm gonna, and, and the probably the biggest talking point to come out of this chapter, in my opinion, because of what was teased by Rob Lucci. So Lucci's like Captain Nico Robin alive. So you, with that, you automatically throw in the element of danger after one. Win, lose, a draw. Like there's danger looming now, because uh, Cypher Paul there. We kind of figured like something like this was gonna happen eventually, with Cypher Paul being on Wano. The question is whether or not Robin can defend herself. Because if this actually happens, I've, I've got three points to point out. So, number one, if Robin ends up getting captured and not able to defend herself, because something bad could go wrong here. So, you remember how when Jinbei came to Wano and Luffy was like, before he, he was like going to throw a toast to like welcome Jinbei, but then realizing the situation, Luffy decided, okay, we're going to wait until after Kaido's brought brought down. We're going to welcome, welcome Jinbei and throw in the biggest banquet, the biggest celebration ever after the business is taken care of with Kaido. Is that going to happen now? Because this could be a bittersweet ending because if Riley gets captured again, they're going to be, they're not going to sit around the way. We know that for a fact. Another thing to point out is like, if Robin gets captured, I think this could, this strengthens the idea of Yamato going with them because there's already, teas there's already a chance that Yamato could ally with them anyway this would be a good opportunity for that to happen we'll have to wait and see and my final point is this if this actually takes place and Yam and robin gets captured and sent to Mer and captured to back to merajoa otis could be set the seeds for the, the next arc and what happened and what follows or this could be the i don't think it's going to be the final arc because they need robin to get, locate the fourth Rob Poneglyph, unless they have another means of getting there. But even then, they still need to read the Rob Poneglyph, which is why I think Emu Simon's contacted Cypherpole, told them, okay, get Robin, because we can't have this. So now they know the element of danger, which again, if she eludes Cypherpole, that bounty's going to shoot up massively. Continuing on with my final point, so if Robin gets captured and gets sent back to Marajoa, keep in mind, Oda has stated we're going to see what happened with Boa Hancock, with Boa Hancock, BB, and Sabo, implying that something bad happened to them. We kind of figured something happened, bad happened to King Cro Cobra, where he got killed with the Gorosei, or whatever happened with them. With whatever happened with them. We also know that there's a possibility Sabo was captured. We still don't know. And we also know something bad could happen to Boa Hancock, although I feel it has more to do with a Admiral more than it does Kobe. So, what better way to tie in the next arc with all these characters in play? And I said, when the, when one started in the beginning because of how the referee was, I said the arc that followed could be a, a rescue arc. It looks like that's where we're headed, unless they can fought the the efforts of the Cypher Pole again. We definitely get an Amy's Lobby 2.0 are possibly in the works after Wano, or it could lead into the final arc. We'll have to wait and see. And keep in mind, we also have to have Robin stating that Luffy will become King of the Pirates. We still haven't had that yet. So what better moment would there be than that? 
So and I know some people is going to have a problem with this because rather than being captured again, this was teased ever since Zoe, okay? So we kind of knew this was going to happen sooner or later. And even if the government wasn't going to be the ones to try and kidnap Robin again, Blackbeard would have. Big Mom is also after after Nico Robin. Black Mario was instructed not to kill Robin. She's vastly important to everybody, all the players involved. Another thing to point out, this is my final point, because you have Sabo there, if Robin gets captured to the same place, this could be the opportunity because you know Dragon's going to go in and try to get his... Get Sabo back. Luffy's going to do the same. And by default, you could have the chance for a reunion. As well as them both trying to get the Nakama back. That's how Oda could play this. But yeah, th this is definitely interesting. It, even if you don't feel the sense of danger with what's going on with Kaido not anymore. You definitely get the uh, sense of urgency with what could happen after Wano. With what happens after the battle with Kaido. Because the Straw Hats are not going to have the energy to fight back. Unless Robin could fight off Cypherpole once they come in to try and capture her. I don't know. But I did, I did say there's not going to be a celebration here because something bad's going to happen. I thought initially to Jinbei, but this could be now, okay. I know it sucks, but it, this is where the plot could move along. It could be where the story moves forward, going forward. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I definitely a definitely interesting talking point. Unfortunately, we have two weeks to wait, so we have two weeks to wait whether or not Sanji, well, you, what that new power will be. And then again, Oda could cut back to Killer versus Hawkins next, or cut to Big Mom versus Kid and Law next, possibly. We also have Zoro versus King in his hybrid form, but I feel like that's either going to be before Big Mom versus Kid and Law or after, because I have to, that has to end before Luffy takes on takes down Kaido. Well, no matter how that's done, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes moving forward. I think it could be the case where Oda's already setting the next arc up. We'll have to wait and see. So let me know what you guys think down below. I thought it was a great chapter. Didn't expect the beginning of this chapter. That's going to do it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did. A thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe to us for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.